Hi guys, it's Tom. I'm Craig's neighbor of Craig's Custom Cooking and the, uh, the donor of the deer here. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to debone a shoulder. All this meat is going to go into ground meat that will be used. I think Craig may put this into more venison sticks, but once you get it ground, it can go into burger for a variety of purposes. But I'm going to debone this to show you how you can use every last bit of meat without leaving anything behind because we don't want to do that. We want to value the life that's been taken. We want to make sure that we uh, don't waste anything and we want to recover as much meat as possible. And that's a part of the overall process, process of, of trying to be efficient through the deboning thing. It's, it's a, I think the old saying was, when Craig, when you... Uh, when you butcher a pig, the only thing you don't use is the squeal. The squeal, yep. Well, <laughs> yeah. we're the same on deer here. I mean, the only thing that'll be left is bones. And then actually, Craig and Sonny turned that into bone, what is it, bone broth? Yeah. Bone broth? We actually take the bones from the deer and make it into bone broth. Yeah, so, I mean, there's an awful lot you can do, but we don't want to waste anything. So it takes a sharp knife, and ironically, sharper knives are safer than dull knives, because dull knives will slip and you can end up accidentally cutting yourself. Now I'm wearing gloves just to be sure here, but you need a sharp knife. And for deboning, it helps to have one with a longer blade. Although I've deboned deer with just a pen knife that's that, that, that is that long. You just need to have a strong, sharp blade. The shoulder has a lot of meat on it. You can use it for roasts and other purposes. Uh, but what we're gonna do is take all the bone out here and make this avail available for ground meat. So we're gonna, run the blade of the knife along the crest of this bone in the shoulder and we're going to start the process there and we're going to do that on either side and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the knife almost like a fillet knife here to get underneath the muscle and we're just going to lift it right off of the bone and we're going to go through that process on either side then we're going to cut around the joint on either side and we're going to lift the muscle off of this whole shoulder blade area and uh, ultimately we'll just separate the whole thing and um, we'll have a, a large uh, portion of meat that can go into grinding. So this is one of these things you don't want to be in a hurry to do because it's uh, careful work. Again I'm wearing gloves just to be sure here. Uh, it helps to have a sharp blade but you want to have good light you want to take your time and take it easy and you kind of want to use the knife to feel your way to the bone also and then be gently kind of um, separating the meat from the bone and starting to pull it away. So we've started to do that and you can see, um, sorry about that, we are getting to the point where we can start um, separating this from the shoulder blade here. We're going to come all the way around like this. And so we're going to take the top half of the shoulder muscle off of the bone here. And then we're going to separate it from the rest of the bone structure. Now we see the shoulder bone also goes straight down here. We're going to use the knife to follow the bone all the way to the joint. See how we do that? And we're going to start working the meat away from the bone down to the joint once again. Be careful with your knife. Uh, and we're going to get down to the joint here and we're going to feel our way around it. Now before I go any further there, I'm going to come around to the top of the bone. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lay the knife against the bone and feel it and I'm going to start removing the, uh, the meat um, and muscle tissue from the bone. And I'm going to do the same down here. I'm going to come down to the joint and I'm just going to run the knife right up the bone here and separate as much of this as possible and I'm going to remove it right here. Uh, sometimes I wear an apron when I do this. That's always helpful when you're going through this process. And so I'm going to come around the other side here and loosen this up a little bit. I got one here. Uh, be Craig's custom there you go. There. <laughs> well, well, there you have it. All right, I think I'm official now. <laughs> so anyway, we've gotten this far. We've taken the, bone, the uh, muscle off of the top 
uh, of the shoulder blade. And we're gonna work around the edge of the blade here to loosen it up. We're gonna flip it over and work on the other side here in just a moment. But we also loosened it up on the other side of the bone here. So now let's flip it over. And as we flip it over, you can see we've got muscle that's connected to the underside of the shoulder blade. And we're gonna use a knife just like a fillet knife to separate that away from the shoulder blade. There's a lot of meat here. And we don't wanna leave that behind. Some people don't use as much of the deer as they can. They sometimes will waste a lot of the shoulder, the neck, even the, uh, the meat on the ribs, and we don't wanna do that. So we've lifted it away. Now we're gonna separate the meat here. So we've removed meat from the shoulder blade. You can see this crest of bone here, and we wanna run the knife on either side of that uh, to get the process started and then to kind of lift the muscle tissue off of the bone on either side. So we've gotten that far, and now we're just going to cut around the joints uh, to get as much meat as we can <clears throat> off of the bones and from around the joint structures. And then we'll be done, and the only thing we'll need to do is maybe cut it down a little bit more so that Craig will have a convenient size to put into his grinder. He's got a strong grinder, but it's only so big, so we need to kind of cut things to the point where he can feed it in. So here's one chunk. Is that okay? Yeah. We'll put that right in there. And uh, we'll continue working this larger uh, meat structure here. We're gonna come down, come down the bone, work it down. Coming up with the knife, which is a little bit safer and easier to do, and around the joint. And you want to take it easy here. And there you have it. This is a deboned shoulder. Right? Yeah. So that's all meat that came out of a shoulder, and you can cut this into roasts. You can then grind it up. You can use it for all sorts of things. But uh, we were able to recover all of that. And we'll double check and see if there's any more here. I may try to get just a little bit more here uh, that's on the, uh, the bones here, but we've done a pretty good job because we worked right off of the bone to really get all of the uh, recoverable meat. And so uh, we're all good to go here. Now, when I start the processing of a deer, I'll hang it up. Obviously, it's been field dressed. Take the hide off, that's its own procedure. You sort of peel it off while you're helping with a sharp knife to sort of separate the hide from the meat. And then you'll remove uh, the whole hide and the head of the deer. And the first thing that I do is I separate the shoulders. And those shoulders will go into a bucket into the refrigerator and then we'll debone it. Uh, later on and it gives us this nice um, mass of meat and then I'll go back and I'll remove the tenderloins and I'll debone them and take them all the way down and in the process I'll take them right down to the neck as much of the neck muscle as possible and after the tenderloins are out the next thing that I do is I go to the rib cage and I will remove the internal loins that I talked about in an earlier session uh, as a part of the uh, the tenderloin, and they're a very choice cut of meat. But then I'll strip the rib cage down. On the outside of the rib cage, I'll remove all the um, the sheath of muscle, and then between the ribs, I'll strip them right down. That all goes into ground meat that we'll uh, grind up, and Craig will turn into venison sticks or burger or something. And then what's left are the two big hindquarters. And I'll debone them in a procedure very similar to this. I'll use a sharp knife, a strong knife, and I'll take care to do it slowly and carefully. Oftentimes I do this at night with a deer hanging. I've got a light, you know, on my head and uh, another light that I've got uh, and, set up. And maybe we, what we should do is a video with you actually yeah. breaking down a deer. 
uh, happy to do that. It, breaking it down. So. And the county actually does classes on this this weekend. Uh, the Fairfax County uh, Deer Archer Management Program actually had a, a special workshop for deer processing for hunters to learn how to do it. The same person who donated, donated uh, this deer to us uh, donated a deer for that process as well. Yeah, so the person who donated the deer, uh, donate one of the deer for that deer processing workshop also donated this deer to us. It was a very kind act of him. He doesn't waste anything. He's very generous with the deer he takes, and he is a much more successful deer hunter than I am. <laughs> so anyway, we use a similar procedure to take the, uh, the meat off the hindquarters and use them for steaks and roasts or jerky. So the jerky that Craig has made here came off of the hindquarters and were sliced into quarter inch thick slices across the grain, but there's a lot you can do with that meat. And then we've been uh, able to really use all of the available de uh, meat from the deer through this whole deboning process. So we can show you how that's done sometime. Okay guys, so we are wrapping up the second shoulder and I think that's gonna do it for all of the cutting and deboning. Uh, and then Craig's going to wrap it up with the final grinding, packaging, and sealing. Let's talk a little bit about uh, kind of the reality check. If you want to start hunting for the first time or if you want to start bow hunting for the first time, it's going to take a little while to do that. Uh, if you want to become a tennis player, it's more than just grabbing a racket and hitting a ball. You, <laughs> you got to learn, you got to practice. And Archery is no different, and as I was mentioning before, even if you want to become proficient with a gun, it takes a while to learn how to use it. Practice makes perfect, but instruction is very important. And obviously this is true for archery. Give yourself some time, don't have to hurry. You'll regret it uh, if you are. You'll never regret it if you take your time. I've been shooting a bow for, believe it or not, over 50 years. And we didn't have YouTube. <laughs> we didn't have archery shops the way we do today. And if I had to do it all over again, I I wish that I had uh, been able to learn how to do it correctly, to get instruction rather than trying to teach myself and learn from friends. That was a little bit of the blind leading the blind. I think you're better off getting expert instruction. And there are folks um, at these archery uh, shops who know how to provide that kind of technical assistance and it's worth every minute. I can't get enough of it. Every time you walk in the door, you learn a whole lot that you didn't know and that you needed to know. So again, shout out to, uh, to do that. Go see the guys at Hoffman Archery. Even Cabela's can help you out. But at Hoffman, they can help you with everything in terms of it, not just the equipment side of this, but actually the archery side of this. And I like archery. I like shooting all the time, even if it's not hunting season. So if you can't get out in the woods this hunting season, you can still get started. You can start your whole process of becoming an archer without waiting. Anyway, uh, we're done with our cutting on the deer, and we hope to see you guys soon again. Take care. All right. If you like our channel, please subscribe, hit the like button and the bell for future notifications, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.